name is Dr. Nasser. I'm a PGY3 internal medicine resident here in the state of Texas, U.S. trained physician and master's in public health with global health leadership, soon to be hospitalist in the state of Florida. I'm here today. I'm going to talk about Neuralink and similar devices. This is a completely educational video for the, your understanding as a patient or as a physician in the field or somebody just curious just wants to know the facts. If you look on YouTube, there's so many videos that talk about this device. Some of them are not very factual based or there's facts, but not completely through and not evidence based. This is going to be all evidence based and I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. I hope we don't get copyright infringed because this is just going to be pictures of the device itself directly from the Neuralink website. If we do, I will have to take it out of the video and you guys can just go to their website and look it up. I want to show you this right here. So the chip will turn out to be something like this. Basically the size of a US quarter. It has these threads that come out of the electrodes that go inside the brain. So Neuralink, the size of a quarter, 23 millimeters wide sits under the scalp you won't be able to see it there it's into the skull and the electrodes go into the brain there's a total of 1024 connection points that are very thin as you saw in the video it's thinner than human hair just five micrometers wide the purpose is to basically be able to listen to the brain cells communicating like to the neurons at that level okay so the point is patients for example with advanced ALS and patients who have had a spinal cord injury their brain works they just can't communicate with the outside the goal is to have this device read the brain cells activity and help them basically control computers phones and other devices basically it's created by Elon Musk's company it's not a future tech it's actually real three people have implanted in their brain as part of an FDA approved clinical trial called prime and they are using their thoughts translated into digital commands this doesn't just come out of nowhere in 1924 we have Hansberger which invented the electroencephalogram or an EEG which reads the brain waves for the first time in 2006 the breakthrough was the brain gate technology which enabled the paralyzed patients to control the computer course there. And then in 2016 was when Elon Musk founded the Neuralink, which with the vision of creating these advanced brain computer interfaces. And Neuralink received the FDA in 2023, and now they're running the clinical trials. It basically has a wireless communication, so it transmits the data from the brain to the external devices via Bluetooth. And it has a wireless charging interface by induction. So you just put it on top just the way you would do a, a phone. And then the, you get the neural recordings. So those electrodes that are inside the brain and planted with a robotic procedure will be picking up the brain signals and the patterns of the way the neurons fire. And then they send it for as digital commands. Now, the whole procedure of implantation is robotic for robotic precision because it's a very precise precision that a human surgeon will not be able to operate. So the robots will do a craniotomy, which is basically a small opening in the skull, carefully designed to minimally invasive as possible. The threads are inserted into very specific parts of the brain tissue while avoiding blood vessels. And there's videos from Neuralink on their YouTube that actually show this, how they target the specific areas and where the electrodes go into. And then they place it and close it and the scalp will cover it and basically will not be able to be seen by anybody. Now, the real patient's real results. So now, Nolan Arbra, you can look him up on YouTube. He has videos on YouTube. He's, he was paralyzed after a diving accident. He's using this device now, controlling computer games, moving the cur cursor by thinking. He has achieved 9 bits per second transfer rate, basically sufficient to browse the web, play chess, regain digital independence, read books. And it's amazing. His life has completely turned around. Bradford he is living with ALS and he can think words and have them appear on the screen. The system really integrates with AI, including Grok, to enhance his communication abilities and interaction with the digital environment. Of course, these aren't just technical achievements. Now, the challenges are important to talk about. Those threads that are inside the brain, patient Nolan has experienced some electrodes pulling away from brain tissue or basically reducing the signal quality and requiring adjustments to maintain the functionality. There is frequent need for recalibration. Patients have needed extensive recalibration up to 45 minutes or more to maintain the control and essentially retaining their brain computer connection. Unfortunately, we don't have long term studies, so we don't really know what happens to the brain tissue after 5 to 10, 20 years of these device and electrodes inside the brain. 
So safe removal protocols and long-term tissue compatibilities are still open questions. Technical limitations would be the signal instability, limited data transfer speeds, energy consumption, and then the cyber security concern, which we're going to talk about as an ethical issue. Can these devices be hacked? Now, the regulatory road, the feasibility phase is the current stage providing safety in small human trials, then expanding the trial to larger studies with more diverse groups of patients, long-term safety data to get years of monitoring for adverse effects, and FDA approval, hopefully by five to seven years. Now, always in technology, in science, it's very good to have competition. And of course, Neuralink does have competition. Synchron is a company, Stentro technology inserted through blood vessels, so a less invasive kind of way of surgical approach. Precision Neuroscience have designed this thin film array that they place on the brain surface instead of having to put the electrodes in the brain. BlackRock Neurotech is a Utah array with direct brain implantation. And then of course, there is a non-invasive options with just the AEG that puts on this across the scalp for external sensors to pick up the brain waves and activities. For Neuralink, right now we're working for computer controlled digital communication device interaction, but hopefully possibly five years plus down the road, hoping to restore vision for patients. Seven to 10 years, reconnect the brain cells to the limbs so they can move the limbs. In three to eight years, maybe gaining some touch and proprioception abilities, sensory feedback. And then, of course, down the road, which I was wondering as well, are these devices able to cognitively enhance the human beings? So just to augment the memory and the processing and all things like that. But the ethical questions that come, one of them is data ownership. Who controls the information? Can they be hacked by malicious actors? Is there... Can these be sold from the company? So those are questions that kind of look sci-fi, but honestly, it's important to think about. Informed consent. Can you really give an informed consent if you don't really know the potential long-term and risks and effects of these implants? And then equity and access. Can we produce enough of this so that not only the wealthy people are able to access these? So we really want equitable access for this. Now, Guidance for patients and families. This is very important in general for any sort of devices and medical devices. Always make sure that you distinguish between current capabilities and future potential and prepare for a journey that's going to have some setbacks and adjustments. Understand the difference between what's experimental, what capabilities are right now versus what they're offering that is going to happen in the future. Always ask evidence. What are the concrete data, the complication rates? not just the promises and the testimonials. You want peer-reviewed studies that show this, okay? Explore all of the options and always look at all of those competitors. What are they offering that they are not offering? Which one is non-invasive? Which is, what's the risk-benefit ratio? We always talk about not just for these devices, with any medical therapy, you can demand all this. If your doctor gives you a medication for X reason, you can always demand the evidence. You can always demand the alternatives. You can always ask what are the risks and benefits for this if they don't tell you that. Address the privacy and the readiness to use who's going to own your data and what are the usage agreements. Consider the psychological support resources specifically in this case. But promise and reality is different, right? And promise is that this is going to restore lost functions. You're able to wireless operation. It's minimally invasive. And, but the current reality is that there is still issues, signal degradation, thread retraction. We talked about frequent needs for recalibration, limited in functional improvement. The sample size right now is only three. And it's still five to seven years away from regulatory approval. So always know what's reality and what's the promises. Make that distinguishment. And when you want to get information, get it from the right sources. Clinicaltrials.gov is the official registry for clinical studies. All of the up-to-date information on recruitment protocols are there. FDA medical device database, you can access the regularly updates, the approval status, the safety notifications that are coming directly from the government agency. The peer-reviewed journals, for example, Nature by Medical Engineering and Neuron offers scientifically validated research. This is very important for you guys to always rely on peer-reviewed journals. Don't just go on testimonials, YouTube videos, just Googling something and a, an article pops up. That doesn't mean because it's an article and published in a journal means that it's peer-reviewed. You need to go to peer-reviewed journals. The Neural Rights Foundation is also a, an avenue for ethical perspectives on neural technology development would be that focuses on privacy, autonomy, and equitable 
access don't solely rely on the company blog social media and new headlines the conclusion is that currently there's three patients for this specific study in Neuralink, 1024 electrodes that need to be implanted into the brain with a vr robot but estimated timeline to potential fda approval will be five to seven years and there's a lot of future potentials for this groundbreaking device it's an amazing groundbreaking technology has a lot of promise and right now it's already changed the life of three patients that are part of the study you can always listen to them and see how much they've gained back since starting to do and what are their their risk benefit analysis and always whenever you consider a technology approach it with that hope and also a healthy level of skepticism ask questions and always maintain that realistic expectation and what is right now possible and what can be achieved years ahead thank you so much if you stay to the end of the video it really means a lot to me if you would just click like comment subscribe engage with the videos the engagement will push the video to be seen by a lot more people there's a lot of pseudoscience out there there's a lot of non-factual videos and things that are created to just gain attention so we want our media to be filled with facts and evidence-based materials compared to all of those hyped up videos just to get attention so it would be very important for us to fill out the world with real science and to eliminate the pseudoscience and so if you stay to the end of the video again thank you guys so much if you want to follow me on my patreon channel for any notes videos abim related content be my guest but i will going to see you guys on the next video